Hi, this is Mashnu, and here is another practical endgame. This time it's a position in the game between Mikhail Budvinik and Isaac Boleslavsky in 1941. This type of positions arise a lot in chess practice. Uh, rook endgames with one pawn more for one of the sides. Here in this position the last move of, um, of white was rook to b1. This was the last move, placing the rook behind the pawn the pass pawn. Now let's see how it continues. The first move of black is king to f7, trying to bring the king closer to the enemy pawn. Actually it would have been a better idea to try to block the pass pawn as soon as possible by playing rook to c6, so then if b5, rook to b6. A pass pawn in rook endgames should be stopped, should be blocked as soon as possible. But let's return to the game and see how this continued after king to f7 white advanced the pawn to b5 king to e6 b6 and now rook to c8 to be able to block the pawn on the last rank now white starts using his other strong piece in the end game that's the king by playing h3 making the square h2 g3 available for the king, the rook goes to b8 of black to stop the pawn, king to h2, king to d5, king to g3, and black plays here king to c6. Now it looks as if black is succeeding in uh, capturing this pass pawn with the rook since it's, at it's attacking with two pieces and it's only defended once. Um, but after king to g4 by white here, um, Black wouldn't achieve much by trading, but I'm sorry, by taking this pawn on b6 because after rook trading, then the white king is much closer to the enemy pawns than the black king, so these pawns would fall and the white pawns would advance. So that's the situation right here after king to g4. Now instead of taking on b6, Boleslavsky played here king to b7. The idea of this move is to um, be able to use the rook in the defense and uh, the king will block this pass pawn. Now white continue with rook to e1. Again the pawn on b6 may not be taken because if black takes then there is a check on b1 and after that trade of rooks and the same idea the white king is much closer to the enemy pawns. So here's where we left, black played here, rook to g8 and rook to e6 was played then to defend the b6 pawn now because now there was the threat of taking here king to a6, black is actually from now on just waiting, moving his king from b7 to a6 king to g5 by white and as you can see as a result of this strategy of white if we look at the king's side, on the king's side white has two heavy pieces against only one of black and this is the idea white now plays h4 so he starts advancing his own pawns king to a6 h5 king to b7 g4 now king to a6 king h4 the idea of white is to advance the h pawn and making now some room for the g pawn later to advance king to b7 h6 here black took on h6 if he doesn't take let's say place g6 then simply a rook to e7 wins king takes b6 rook takes h7 and then the h pawn is unstoppable let's return to the game here g takes h6 was played now rook takes h6 rook to g7 defending the h pawn and king to h5 king a6 rook c6 threatening rook to c7 rook e7 rook c7 now a check on e5 and the g pawn advances now so white is getting closer and closer to the promotion of g pawn. Now the king takes on b6 
and the rook takes on h7 and we have a theoretical endgame here that is one for white I'll show you how it continued it's very instructive king goes to c6 so the king now can come closer to the king uh, side king goes to h6 king comes closer now g6 advancing rook to e1 the opponent's rook is trying to place the rook on the behind the pawn rook to f7 king e6 the rook on this f file is important it blocks the black king from coming closer to the pass pawn rook to f2 now rook a1 waiting move g7 rook h1 check king g6 now rook g1 check again so black has managed to place his rook behind the pass pawn bad but uh, the king can go to h7 now the threat is clear to promote in one move on g8 so rook h1 check must be played now the king goes to g8 and the black king goes to e7 here starts what we call the bridge building it's a, a technique that you can as there are many many videos in uh, on, on, on YouTube explaining this technique it's um, me, mo most videos are called Lucena position because that's the uh, how this position is called rook to e2 king d7 rook e4 rook h2 now king f7 and here black resigned the reason is that you cannot with black continue giving checks because now that the rook white rook is on the fourth rank black uh, I'm sorry white can walk forward with the king and after a check he can go to f6 another check he goes to g5 another check and there we are this is what we call building a bridge rook to g4 and now it's impossible to stop this pawn so this is how the game ended now it's quite a quick explanation of this end game I realize but I um, hope that you understood the main ideas the main ideas let's go to the beginning here of actually advancing this pawn and persuading black to stay with one of his strong pieces on the queen side so we have a majority of two strong pieces the rook and the king on the king side against only one of black the rook and then white prepares the breakthrough first very well and then it comes with h6 and here then he at a certain point returns the pawn on, on b6 to take the h pawn and now we have this theoretical one end game it's very important of course that you know the theory of this type of end games that you know how to win this you know how to build this bridge in the lucena position with the um, the key move is moving the rook to the fourth rank in this type of positions where your own king is in the promotion square if you don't do this then black will simply continue giving checks each time that the white king moves away from the uh, from the g file so well i hope you found this interesting and instructive and i'll see you next time on youtube goodbye